If you love shotguns, there is plenty to get excited about in 2023, especially if you're partial to sub-gauges. This year, a handful of companies delivered new shotguns. Beretta engineered the first ever 3-inch gas-driven 28-gauge autoloader. Mossberg debuted the first dedicated turkey gun in 28-gauge, and TriStar has jumped into the niche lever-action shotgun arena with its first 410. And that's just a start. Browning made a dramatic change to its Satori. Benelli, Stoger, and CZ all overhauled a variety of their existing shotgun models. Rem Arms expanded the offerings of the new Remington Fieldmaster, which replaced the Express last year. Stevens, owned by Savage, is once again trying its hand at improving inexpensive Turkish shotguns. Clay shooters who are looking for a customized over-under but don't want to pay bespoke prices should take notice of the incredibly adjustable break-action 12-gauge Caesar Guarini built. In 2023, there is a shotgun for you no matter your hunting or shooting pursuit. Now it's time to decide which one to buy. That will be no easy task once you finish watching through this list. Browning Satori Composite I had to do a double take at SHOT Show Range Day when I saw an all-black 12-gauge Browning Satori sitting there on the gun rack mixed in amongst the camo-clad autoloaders. After 50-plus years of building walnut and steel Satoris, Browning is introducing a composite version and never-before-seen finish on the company's flagship over-under. There are a few notable differences between the conventional Satoris and this new composite. Since it's lighter, 7.4 pounds, due to the synthetic stock and forend, this Satori handles a bit differently than the traditional Satoris. It mounts fast, but it can be tough to keep moving if you're not used to shooting clays with a light shotgun. However, its light weight will make it easy to carry in the field. Heavy shotguns typically swing better, but not if you're dog-tired from lugging around muddy ag fields in pursuit of roosters all day. The synthetic variant features an adjustable cheek piece, which you access by removing the buttstock. Not all walnut and steel Satoris have this feature, to provide a more custom fit. The rest of Satori remains much the same. There is still a single selective trigger, the gun is built on box lock action, and the familiar tall ivory bead sits at the end of the vent rib barrels, available in 26, 28, or 30 inches. Auto ejectors dispatch spent hulls when you break the Satori open, and there is an inflex recoil pad that assists with felt recoil which I found manageable shooting light 1 and 1 and 8 ounce target loads. One drawback, there are only three Invector Plus chokes, IC, M, and F, that come standard with the Satori. That's not ideal if you want to use a Satori for clay shooting or hunting quail or grouse in tight cover, but you can always buy additional Invector Plus chokes. Mossberg SA Pistol Grip Turkey The 28 gauge has long been popular with upland hunters and enjoyed a renaissance among duck hunters with advancements in bismuth and tungsten shot. But turkey hunters haven't had a dedicated shotgun in that bore diameter until now. Mossberg's SA-28 is chambered for 2 and 3 quarter inch shot shells. There's also a 20 gauge 3 inch model, with a pistol grip, ghost ring sights, and a picatinny rail for adding an optic. The vent rib barrel is 22 inches long and an extended turkey choke comes with a gas driven autoloader. An oversized bolt handle makes it easier to quietly slide the action forward as you chamber around. Finished in mossy oak greenleaf camouflage, the SA series is the only current production Mossberg line that uses a crossbolt safety. All other models have tang mounted safety. The SA20 is also available in a non pistol grip variant, which makes it a half pound lighter, five and a half pounds, than the pistol grip version. A word of caution before you buy the SA28, Make sure it's legal to turkey hunt with a 28 gauge in your state. Sauer SL5 Waterfowl Sauer is better known for building German rifles. They've been doing so for 250 years than shotguns. So they smartly teamed with respected Italian shotgun maker Breda to deliver the SL5 Waterfowl, an inertia driven 3.5 inch autoloader available in 3 inch as well as in the black synthetic model. The two piece receiver is made up of a steel upper for added strength and aluminum lower to cut a small amount of weight from the SL5. There are three barrel lengths, 26, 28, and 30 inch available, which are topped with a stepped ventilated rib. You get five extended choke tubes, C, IC, M, IM, and F, for added versatility. An oversized bolt handle and bolt release button make manipulating the controls easier when your hands are cold or if you're wearing gloves. 
If the SL5 reminds you of a Benelli, that's because of its roots. Beretta owned part of Benelli before Beretta bought it. Beretta A400 Upland 28 With the popularity of sub-gauge shotguns, you may be curious why Beretta took this long to bring a 3-inch 28-gauge to market. They've had a 2 and 3 quarter inch 28-gauge option for years. It's because no semi-automatic shotgun manufacturer has ever built a gas-driven 28 in that chambering before, so there were some engineering hurdles to clear. Beretta had to modify the gas piston housed within the A400 Upland to cycle 3-inch shot shells reliably, a lengthy process that took countless attempts to properly tune. Gas guns use the propellant from a fired shot shell to drive the piston, which operates the bolt so it can eject spent hulls, so that makes the piston an incredibly important piece to get right. The aesthetics, walnut stock, forend, and aluminum nickel-plated receiver, the name of the Beretta A400 Upland indicate it's an Upland shotgun first, but the semi-auto will play in the duck blind or turkey woods. A variety of ammo makers offer 3-inch, 28-gauge loads. It's a capable clay gun as well. Since the gas system is built to cycle any shot shell charge weight, this model does not have the kickoff recoil system, hydraulic shock absorbers built into the stock like other A400 and A300 Berettas, but it's an almost 6-pound 28-gauge, so the weight combined with gas-operated action and recoil pad should tame felt recoil adequately. The 28-inch barrel has a 6mm ventilated rib and three flush-mounted Optima chokes, IC, M, F. If you need to adjust the balance of the gun, the 4 end cap was designed to add aftermarket weights. Beretta A400 Extreme Plus 20 One of the best gas-operated semi-automatic shotguns ever built is now being offered in a sub-gauge, but Beretta's A400 Extreme Plus 20-gauge has a few upgrades you won't find on the 12, which was the winner in our test of the best duck hunting shotguns. It's easier to load the 20 versus the 12 because Beretta incorporated the same Pro Series lifter used by the company's 1301 tactical shotgun. Once you chamber a 2 and 3 quarter or 3 inch shot shell, the carrier stays lifted, so no more snagging your thumb between the magazine tube and lifter or difficulty loading if you're wearing gloves. Beretta also designed the bore of the Stelium Plus barrel, used mainly for the Italian gunmaker's expensive over-unders, with 12.5-inch forcing cones to maximize pattern density. There's quite a bit of debate as to whether extending forcing cones past 5 inches actually improves patterns. Once I get a chance to shoot the A400 on paper, I'll report back. Offered in real tree, mossy oak, and true timber camo, the A400 weighs just under 7 pounds. It has the same kickoff recoil system as the 12 gauge, which includes hydraulic shock absorbers near the buttstock and pistol grip. There's also a micro-core recoil pad and a soft comb that dampen felt recoil. A 28-inch stepped rib barrel leads into a fiber optic front sight. You get five extended choke tubes, C, I, C, M, I, M, F as well. Included shims allow for adjustment of the 14 and a quarter inch stock. The cross bolt safety is reversible and rubberized grips are integrated into the forend and pistol grip. One inconvenient difference you will find on the 20 is the forend cap does not have the same half-turn quick-release feature as the 12 does. Beretta Ultra Leggero Most well-bit 12-gauge over-unders weigh at least 7 pounds, but Beretta decided to change that this year with the Ultra Leggero, which translates to ultra-light in English, by skeletonizing the steel receiver. Depending on the barrel length you choose, 26 or 28 inch, this brake action weighs between 6.4 to 6.6 pounds. There's quite a bit of steel that was removed from the pockets of the action and filled with techno-polymer inserts. If you remove the recoil pad from the buttstock, you'll also notice that the wood walls of the stock are thinner than normal. Another way weight was taken out of the gun. A buckstock action, the Ultra Leggero uses the similar mechanics found on Beretta's 690 series. The safety is automatic, so when you open the action, the gun goes back on safe. This is a nice feature for hunters, but you may not want it if you use this over-under for clays too. A gunsmith can easily convert the safety to manual for you. There are no side ribs on the barrels, again, to decrease weight, and Beretta provides five flush-fitting Optima HP chokes, C, I, C, M, I, M, and F. The balance point of the Ultra Leggero is weight forward, which I think is best for a lighter gun like this because it allows you to keep the barrels moving more easily than if the weight was placed in the stock. Remington 870 Fieldmaster Synthetic Rem Arms discontinued the 870 Express last year and replaced it with the Fieldmaster, which has an upgraded rust-resistant finish on the barrel and receiver, three chokes instead of one, 
smooth metal finishes inside the chamber and on the action bars for improved cycling, and it's drilled and tapped for an optic. In 2023, REM Arms is adding a synthetic variant to the 870 Fieldmaster platform. The stock has a comb insert that is interchangeable with the 870 Tactical Side Folder and Versa Max. There will be a compact 20-gauge version as well. It comes with a 21-inch barrel and length of pull kit, so you can add inches as your young shooter grows into the 870. The standard Fieldmaster has 26 or 28-inch barrel options and weighs 7.5 pounds. Benelli M2 Field Benelli's M2 has been in production since the late 1980s, but the Field variant was overhauled for 2023. The changes are mainly ergonomic. Benelli replaced the triangular crossbolt safety with a circular and made the bolt release button long and skinny to match the shape of the release used on the Super Black Eagle 3. There were some small changes made to the stock and receiver, but you can't tell much of a difference other than the gun fits a little better. At least it did for me on the SHOT Show floor in Las Vegas. The major upgrade is on the forend. Benelli tapered it, starting at the forend cap back toward the receiver. This allows shooters of various hand sizes to find a more comfortable hold on the M2, though it lost that sleek feel Benelli shooters are used to. Mechanically, the 2023 version of the M2 adopted the same bolt as the SB3 and Ethos. It uses a small spring to rotate the bolt head shut and drive the shot shell into battery. This lessens the chance of a misfire when the trigger is pulled, often referred to as the Benelli click. Turkey hunters should note that the inertia-driven semi-auto will also be available with a 24-inch barrel in 20 and 12-gauge in mossy oak bottomland. The only way to get that combination before in the M2 was to buy the performance shot model, which is double the price. Benelli Montefeltro Benelli's Montefeltro also underwent a redesign this year. Like the M2 Field, the stock and pistol grip have been slimmed down, crossbolt safety switched from triangle to circle, and the bolt release button made long and thin. One modification you should notice when loading the Montefeltro is a new two-piece shell latch. It's a part typically built into three-gun competition shotguns. Some shooters buy it as an aftermarket upgrade for a faster, smoother loading experience. The latch, which is connected to your bolt release button, is a nice feature when running through multiple boxes of ammo, though that's not something most American hunters need. But if you like to regularly shoot clays with a Montefeltro, or you're a high-volume dove or pigeon shooter, you'll find it useful. The forend of the 3-inch inertia autoloader is more shapely than the last iteration, and the Benelli sports swivel studs if you want to add a gun strap. That hasn't been available on the Montefeltro since the synthetic variant was introduced in 2013. Stoger M3500 Stoger, Benelli's introductory shotgun brand, underwent a facelift as well. The M series, 3500, 3000, and 3020 semi-autos were slimmed down giving the Turkish-made autoloaders a fit and feel closer to that of Benelli shotguns. They also have a lower profile and aren't as boxy as the old models. Shooters will find that the force end conforms better to their hand. Previous models had a fairly flat-sided forend with machine-checkered grips. New M-Series semi-autos are shapely and give you more to hold on to. An oversized bolt handle, bolt release button, and beveled loading port come standard. Stoger also upgraded the recoil pad from a stiff piece of plaster to a softer, flexible pad. They carried over the recoil reducer, a long spring piston inside the stock that lessens felt recoil from the original M-Series. There's also a removable rubber cheek piece that allows you to fit the gun to your body type. The feature will come in handy if you deer or turkey hunt and want to add an optic to the 3500, which is drilled and tapped for Weaver-style scope bases. CZ-712 G3 the third generation of CZ-712 has a slightly larger bore diameter than the G2, 735 versus 730, five extended choke tubes, shims for a customized stock fit, and includes a new Mossy Oak Terra Elements camo finish. CZ made the 712 G3 available in a Turkish walnut and steel variant, as well as a matte black utility model that sports a 20-inch barrel. Gas-operated, the 3-inch 712 includes two gas pistons, one for magnum loads and another for light target shot shells. There's also an oversized bolt handle and bolt release button. The bolt lock is located on the right side of the trigger grip, not the carrier, so you don't have to reach under the gun before opening the bolt. A cross bolt safety is positioned at the front end of the trigger guard. It is not reversible for left-handers, but southpaws will find it easier to manipulate than safeties located at the rear of the guard. So that wraps up our video. Hope you found this video helpful, and if so, Please leave a thumbs up as I always appreciate that.
Also, please feel free to leave a comment, suggestions for future videos, or questions you have, as we love getting to respond to as many of those as we can. And if you subscribe to the channel, welcome to our All About Survival family. We've got lots more videos coming your way. Till then, stay safe, stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!